Hey guys, Omar here. And I thought today we would talk a little bit about trying to capture peak emotion, I call it. It's my definition, peak emotion. <laughs> and to define this, you know what this is, but you know, like when someone gives you kind of like a look, they're like, hey, the, the, hey, <laughs> and the moment is gone in an instant. The, the height of that moment is where you go click and then it's gone. It can be a point. It could be when someone squeezes someone or kisses someone. I mean, they happen so fast, these moments. And so as photographers, well, me as an event photographer, I am always like on the hunt for that peak emotional moment in my party pictures, in my family portrait sessions. And so in this video, I thought I would give you some hints if you wanna capture peak emotion. Now let's start with if you're not a professional photographer, you're just trying to take better photographs of your kids maybe or your family. And I've talked about this before in the past, but what I see most people do when they're taking pictures of their family is they'll put people in groups and they'll point the phone and they'll say, oh, look over here, look at Johnny, Johnny, keep Johnny. And everyone's like, mm. okay, you captured that they exist. <laughs> but you didn't capture the essence of the group, of the family, of the kids. And so if you are watching this uh, video because you have a camera and you're trying to take better pictures of your family, it's not so bad to just grab your camera and have your kids do things. You know, kids, if they're not camera aware, will be themselves. And if you wanted to put them in a group, you know, sit them down, uh, maybe give them an activity. You have to work a little bit so they are not camera aware. So one thing, my kids are totally camera aware and don't care. <laughs> so I get shots of my kids all the time um, just being because they're, they're already so used to the camera being everywhere. So my second hint is don't whip out a camera and then they know what's coming. So you hear moans. So to get emotional moments, they have to not only be camera aware, but also the camera will disappear if it's around all the time. So if you, you're gonna have to work at it. You're gonna have to keep taking pictures of everything. And if you have older kids, eventually it's like, come on, mom, hey, mom. But then eventually that goes away. They'll look up, they'll see the camera and they know what you're doing. You're just taking pictures. And then the second hint is to just always have your camera out. And you know, you're gonna take a lot of clunkers, but if you're always capturing them, you'll start getting peak emotion because behind your viewfinder or your LCD screen, you can kind of anticipate moments or you, you know, your kids are laughing, your camera is right there. You can take a great shot of them laughing. Number two, another hint, number two, I number things and I lose track of, so number four, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Next suggestion is, this is especially good if you're outside or if you have natural light, is to shoot in a higher burst. In, sometimes in order to get peak emotion, you have to get the full range of all the emotions. So if someone's about to hug someone, you shoot a couple of frames before, click, 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 and there's the squeeze, which is the keeper, and then a few shots after. So shooting in high burst will give you not only something to pick from, uh, but it will also, people kind of lose their twinge in their the little twinge in the eye right away. Especially if you say like, grab your brother. Grr. Someone grabs their brother or something and they're, they're sort of like off balance. You know, that's the moment there. So if you shoot three or four frames, you're going to get a good one. Instead of trying to get the decisive moment with single shot, it's, it's not going to work. <laughs> I found it hasn't worked for me. One bad thing about the high burst is you will have to cull through a lot more images, but the payoff to me is worth it. Going, and I've gotten really good at going through images and seeing all the moments and picking the peak emotional moment. And then the rest are, you know, they could go in the delete bin. So I do shoot a lot at my portrait sessions. Um, people sparkle just disappears. So you have to, the peak sparkle, grab it, where you can actually see the real person and then the rest is pff, garbage. So let me talk portrait sessions a little bit and then I'll talk about events because portrait sessions, you have a little bit more control and events are, you have no control. So there's a couple of things you could do with portrait sessions because you can control the situation. In order for peak 
you know, you could put people in poses, but nothing is really going to come from that except them standing there. You could document that they exist. <laughs> to get emotions uh, out of your clients, you're going to have to interact with them. And this becomes a little tricky because we're all different people. You know, they say the camera looks both ways. I learned that from Rick Salmon, who probably learned it from someone else. The camera looks both ways. So when I look at my photographs, I know those people are reacting to me. The joy and the laugh and the hugs is because when I'm photographing them, I am feeding off them and I feel their hugs and their love and their cuteness and hu you know what I'm saying? So if you're not that type of person, it's gonna be hard for some of you to get peak emotion out. But that's okay, peak emotion doesn't necessarily mean, and this is why the camera looks both ways, is my pictures have a lot of uh, cuteness and energy and laughs kind of stuff. But if you're a more su subdued person, the emotional peak can be something a little bit more subdued or maybe a very sweet moment. Uh, something with, that's lower energy. So the, the peak emotion has to kind of match your emotion or your peak emotion. And since I'm when I'm shooting, I'm a goofball and I'm having a great time and I'm shooting mostly kids and acting like a kid and a moron, that's what comes from the photographs. So this is not the same advice for everyone that does portrait sessions. You have to do what works for you for me, it's getting people together and um, photographing them, but then having them, maybe one hint is having them act something out. Like I've had dads and sons and be like, all right, dad, pretend you're giving your son great advice. We never put them on the spot because they can't give advice <laughs> on the fly, but it's all like blah, 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 and son. So that even that situation becomes funny. Like I'll go from one side and I'll shoot the conversation and then they're kind of laughing about that. So if you put people sometimes in silly and or absurd situations or have them act stuff out, sometimes it's not what they're doing or what you made them do. It's the emotion that comes from after, the laughing. Um, my favorite for teens when I'm shooting bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs is when mom, come, when you have a teen boy and you ask mom to come in slowly for the kiss, there's like, mm. <laughs> so that happens sometimes. You get great emotion after that and that's always really sweet. So um, in portrait sessions, you're able to set up situations and you may wanna sit there and take notes and think about what are some things you could do that work with your personality. And that way, uh, you can get peak emotion that way. Oh, I was going to say something about uh, doing what works best for you. Because you can't copy what I do. I try to copy. Uh, there's a great photographer called Sandy Pooch. She does uh, children ph children's photography and kids photography. And I, I took her course um, in Seattle on a Creative Live. You should check out Creative Live if you've never checked out Creative Live. It's a great online, not sponsored by online community, uh, sorry, online courses that you can take. But I did a baby photography and kids photography one. And she used to take out a rubber chicken that made noise to get a reaction from the kids. Like the, if the kids were kind of like not there, like a toddler or something, she would take out a chicken and honk it. And she would get these looks that were like beautiful from the kids. So I tried to do what she did. And I would be like, I would take out a chicken and it was like honk and the kids would look at me like, what the hell is this guy doing? <laughs> and it just didn't work, you know? So the chicken didn't work. You have to find your chicken and make that work. I should put that on a t-shirt. Now we should talk about uh, portrait sessions really quickly that people wanna look good in portrait sessions. So peak emotion is what this video is about, but if you are doing portrait sessions, your clients wanna look good. So make sure that you get good, cool, awesome, family together shots that they can love and post, and then you can do the peak emotion hugs and stuff. Because if you turn in all kinds of, like I know how I laugh, I, you know, <laughs> I look like a horse. And those pictures, if someone sees the picture of me looking like a horse, they, they, they can feed from it, they can feel it. But when I look at it, I'm like, <laughs> oh, I just remembered something. I, I didn't remember, I just saw it here written. But going back to portraits, don't forget to capture the in-between moments. 
So the in-between moments are, you know, like no one's posing, people are just standing around. And if your portrait session is fun and people are having a good time, you can capture those like little moments in between where people are being goofy during the portrait session. Your camera has to be ready, but uh, don't forget the in-between moments. You'll get some really good peak emotion there. All right, let's talk events because this is the one that's most rewarding. So the first thing is you need to be quick. You need to know your gear. So you can't be fumbling with settings. Your camera has to be set to shoot um, all night, pretty much the same settings. You can't fumble and change your settings and expect to get peak emotion that's happening. You're gonna miss it. So since I shoot mostly receptions, this means my flash power is pretty much at a safe place where it always lights up the, the people. My shutter speed is pretty constant throughout the night and my aperture is has enough, enough depth where I'm not gonna miss focus, okay? And speaking of focus, you have to be able to focus your camera. And the only way to do this if you're a beginner is you need to practice before an event or before a portrait session. The camera has to become an extension of your hand because you have to be thinking about moments that may come. You have to scan. I feel like I'm the <laughs> when I'm at, at an event, I'm like the Terminator. I'm like, zzz, zzz, zzz. I'm constantly scanning and looking for anticipating looking for anticipating sentences. I'm looking for moments and I'm anticipating people's reactions to things. So I scan the room and I'm constantly looking for little places where peak emotion may explode. This could be a conversation between two people. This could be like where, you know, there's dancing going on or there's a group of people dancing that are having like a, an amazing time. If you jump in and have and you have an amazing time with them, you're going to get some peak emotion directed at your camera. And that is one of my trademarks is that when I want people, when they see my pictures to feel like they're in the party. And one way to do that is to be in the party. And so I recommend maybe a wide lens. So one of the lenses I shoot with, I've shot with the 16 to 35 millimeter lens. I've shot with 17 millimeters. So sometimes you're right next to people that are like, yeah. And um, you can get some really good peak emotions uh, coming from the photograph if you're close and wide. So that's one of my favorite ways to shoot um, instead of you know, getting peak emotion from a zoom lens, you feel detached from the subject. So zoomy zoom, not zoomy zoom, widey wide. Now, just like before, we talked about a portrait session and shooting burst. Well, at the wedding and event, you're gonna have to shoot burst as well because there are a lot of clunkers that aren't peak emotion. But the more frames you take, the more moments you'll capture each night. You can't, st I don't, I, if I eat at an event, it's like four nuggets and run because I'm always looking for those moments. Why fill up a gallery with mediocre photos when you can fill it up with uh, emotional, impactful photos from people's events? All right, I hope that helped you guys. I'll see you next time.